So I've set up a meeting with Professor Yada, who is doing some startling experiments in this area. What's this over here? So the experiment in this tank is actually an attempt to quantify this observation that uh, Namazu gets more active before earthquakes. Normally, the fish just sits on the bottom, not doing very much. There's a, there's a light beam. And every time the fish passes through the light beam, this counter records it. On an average day, it might break that light beam 10 times. There's a counter on the left there. Then Professor Yada cross-references the Namazu's movements with data about earthquake activity. But here we have, a couple of months ago, you know, normal activity, not very much, but on one day here, more than 60 times. And that red line there, there was an earthquake, magnitude 6.1. So it seems to show a real correlation, you know, a, a quantifiable correlation between Namazu activity and earthquakes. How exactly these catfish are able to detect these earthquakes so early is unclear. But one thing is certain, they can, and long before any human being. It's the connection and the evidence I was looking for. Because I believe in the ancient world, the world when this legend was created, in a time before science, fishermen would witness this increased activity and soon afterwards experience an earthquake. They couldn't help but connect the two events. But instead of this activity being a reaction to the faint early tremors, they perceived it as the earthquake's cause. And in a country obsessed with fish, which also suffers regular devastating earthquakes, the legend of the Namazu was born. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the River Monsters page.